Let's talk about how you can navigate around the viewport inside UDK. Let me maximize my viewport. If you hold down the left mouse button and move forward and back, you're able to track front, back, and if you move left and right, you're able to look around. If you hold down the right mouse button, you're going to be able to look around. And if you hold down both left mouse button and the right mouse button together, you're able to go up and down and move left and right. Another way you can navigate is using the WASD keys. And if you're familiar with Hammer Source, this is a great way to navigate around the viewport. And it directly translates to uh, moving around inside the first person shooter game. So if you right click and hold down and then use the WASD keys, you're able to go forward, back, and uh, with a mouse you can look around as you're moving around. So this is a very intuitive, great way to move around. And uh, another way is if you are a Maya user, if you hold down the U key on the keyboard and hold that down, if you press the left mouse button, you're able to look around, the right mouse button zooms in and out, and then if you hold down the left mouse button and the right mouse button together, you're able to look around. If you press down on the middle mouse button, you're able to move around left to right, up and down. Now let's cover BSP brushes and the use of static meshes. So to illustrate my point, uh, first let's open up one of the maps that comes with UDK. So let's open up Deathmatch Sanctuary. So here we have one of the maps that comes with UDK opened. Majority of the maps that use Unreal Engine are made up of static meshes. So everything we see here, most of it is made up of models. If I hit the W key, which is hide static meshes, we're able to see nothing else but brushes made up of the rest of the environment. And let me turn off the blackening volumes. So here we have majority of the shell of the environment is nothing but BSP brushes. And if I hit the W key, we can see the static meshes again. So let me go in a different view. So here we have the environment with static meshes and all the BSP geometry together and uh, if I hit the W key, everything's gone. So majority of the detail and, and majority of the level is made up of static meshes. So here we have another map opened, Capture the Flag Necropolis, and if I hit the W key, it hides the static meshes and you can really see now how much static meshes make up of pretty much 90% of the environment. So the major takeaway is block in your environment using BSP brushes, but majority of your time is going to be spent detailing and using static meshes. Now that you have a better understanding of PSP brushes and static mesh usage inside UDK, uh, let's create a simple room. So let's start a new map, go up to File, New, and choose Additive. So here we have our new level, and we have a red builder brush. The red builder brush is a template from which all the rest of the brushes in the environment are created. The red builder brush does not show up in game, and all it is is just a template for you to use in order to create other brushes. By going up to the left hand side, we have here we have nine different options for our BSP brushes. If you right click on the cube, we can set specific value dimensions of our template cube. So here if I modify any of these, let's say I put 512, 512 and 256 for the height, and what it does, it modifies our template brush to fit those values. So if I close this now, all we have done is we modified our template. So in order for me to add a brush inside from this template, we need to go up here, there's four options. We have uh, CSG add, subtract, intersect, and de-intersect. Now since we chose our map to be additive, which is the most commonly used uh, map type inside UDK, we will add our brush. So by clicking on CSG add, we will add a brush where the template is. Click on this, we have our brush. Now we can move our template away. If we go inside our brush, it's completely solid. So we need to subtract from this additive brush. So we're going to use the template again. And we are going to subtract 
the interior of our room using the template. So going back up to the cube, and let's set a few values. Uh, I'm going to set 480 by 480 and uh, 224. We have our template br brush positioned right inside, and going up to the top view, we can see that the template brush is going to be right inside, so we can now safely subtract. There's a, a CSG subtract operation right here. We click and move inside. Now we have our interior of the room. So if I move my builder brush, we have the interior. We can see that subtractive brush is this yellow color and the additive brush is the blue. So that is how you create brushes inside UDK. You add brushes and then you subtract from them. There's two other options that you can use which are CSG intersect and deintersect. Intersect and deintersect doesn't actually add or subtract from our geometry. What it does, it modifies the red builder brush. So if I position my red builder brush intersect an already created geometry or these two brushes and if I click CSG intersect we can see that it takes the builder brush and it modifies the builder brush to the already created geometry this includes the additive brush and the subtractive brush we just added and if I need to go back to a builder brush that we had before a cube I just left click on the cube and we are back if I click de-intersect you will delete everything that it's de-intersecting and only keep the areas of the template that are not touching the ready created brush. So if I click on this, we can see now that this is what we get. And here we can add this brush. So if I, if I hit CSG add or use a, a shortcut which is control A, I can add. Now to better understand why we add or subtract when we first add our brushes, when we went up to File New and we created an additive map, this presents us with an additive type of environment. If we go up and then we go to New and we choose Subtractive, this presents a subtractive environment. So what's the difference between the two? Well, the best way I can explain this, well, let me go back to Additive. Think of Additive Level as a big, huge, empty space, and you add brushes into it. If we chose Subtractive, Think of subtractive level as a big, huge block of rock, of, uh, of solid mass, and we have to carve our rooms from it. So here's a, a real-world example. Um, creating this building would be additive type of uh, level creation, because you add walls, you add floors, you, you basically you create uh, in, in completely empty space you create geometry and subtractive is think of this uh, uh, statue it used to be big solid rock and uh, an artist came in and he carved this statue from solid rock this would be subtractive method most of the maps created inside UDK they use additive uh, that's the most commonly used type if you stick with additive you'll be good to go